Hello from Morris, so come to Invest. We talk about investing, finance, and professional development for today's in terms only. The investment gun talk today will be TH. First, I want to say happy Friday, everybody. It's been a great week so far. We almost do the weekend. It's my second posting us of today. Respect to recording time of 5.16 p.m. on the Eastern Time. Ethereum country $4,472, down about 1.41% so far. On the overall crypto market, besides Shiba Inu, which is up 25% at the moment, um, on the equity side, it's kind of hovering on a sideways fashion, leaning more towards a, you know, a bearish sentiment ever since the you know, surge that we've seen after the FOMC meeting that we've heard earlier this week. It seems like we're just normalizing with that weekend or the Friday affectation, people just taking profit and relaxing as we're heading to the weekend. And on the news front, on Ethereum specifically, let's take a look, look at it, shall we? With respect to Decrypt about three hours ago, talk about Ethereum DeFi project, BZX hacked again for reported $55 million lost again. So it seems like this is, uh, I think, um, and if I'm counting, uh, I think eight total occurrences in the last three months so far. Um, and I think a collections of close to about billion dollars of you know accounts hacked and lost i know some um accounts were able to recuperate uh or get their money back uh because you know the exchange apps or the companies you know have the fiduciary duty to do so right to give the money back to the investors but it's definitely lost money for the sake of a lost cost right so it's definitely something that um, in the technological infrastructure perspective, um, you know, we need to step it up because um, for these accounts to be hacked, these are not just accounts. These are people's life savings that we are, you know, putting them in a vulnerable positions, right? Like just imagine yourself, you know, you are very excited. You have invested $25,000 of your personal savings into Bitcoin and Ethereum, et cetera, et cetera. And next thing you know, you wake up, you know, with a blink out of an eye, you see your account just gone or deactivated. And you try to call the app administrator, you try to talk to the customer service app person, nowhere to be found, right? Which is, uh, you know, relatively a systemic issues that we've been seeing on Coinbase, Robinhood as well, that people just are having a tough time to communicate or contact uh, the technical supports, right? Um with this additional exogenous elements, it just you know makes it a very difficult proposition for people to feel safe and feel comfortable when there are a lot of money being thrown around, right? These are like billions of dollars being thrown around. So definitely um, not the most ideal setup, right? And the next one is on Cointelegraph about three hours ago, talk about finance redefined, Avalanche launches $200 million fund, WXRP to debut on Ethereum October 29th to November 5th. So this is something that we've been uh, capturing uh, on the media front. Uh, seems like obviously uh, with this launch, a lot of money being thrown at Ethereum base value proposition. And with respect to the debut, we have seen some sort of correlations to the market dynamics, but not so obvious, right? And on top of the market dynamics, let's talk about the option expiry today, the $450 million for Ethereum specifically. Seems like today was just a more of a flat day again, right? More leaning downwards, um, not so much volatility that we were expecting. We're still kind of hovering around like the resistance levels for selective coins. Um, Ethereum just basically sustaining at the level we at right now because Bitcoin is sustaining, and also on the technical front, we're sustaining above the four thousand one hundred fifty, which is you know. Um, it's a level that we're holding on, but we know the technical is very stretched, very stretched up right now. We still overbought. So again, right, the risk is not really in our favor, not favorable, especially for public investors to incur more risk at the moment. And then the next one is on Cointelegraph three hours ago. about altcoin surges, even as Bitcoin Ethereum price falls towards key support levels, right? And this is something that we've been talking about, right? Um, Bitcoin is currently sustaining above the $60,000 mark, right? With the 61,142 right now, down about 0.51%. People are taking some profit, but also because we've been running really hot at the same time, 
there isn't really any specific activities that's going up or going down right now uh, or incentivizing people to do anything. So people are just holding um, and there's just a lack of uh, volume at the same time. Um, but who knows? This weekend, we might see some surprising news, right? Because this weekend is not a holiday. It's not Halloween uh, like last week, which I recall specifically that we had two very non-active days of news, right? But this week, it might be different, right? we could technically see a collections of news and the news that i've seen based on activity wise uh, i think is um it starts around like late saturday around like 5 p.m uh do rates until sunday uh at 4 30 p.m which is like the typical time frame that i've seen uh, you know the news being the most active on the media front so we'll see how that goes and we will triangulate the risk profile from there and then the next one is on Decrypt uh, four hours ago. Talk about Bitcoin company Bakat. I don't know, Back, B A K K T. I think that's Back, right? Backed will now also offer Ethereum to customers. So it just makes sense, right? I think it's a very popular proposition for investors for them to capture commission dollars or transaction fees, if you may. Bitcoin is one of the prominent ones. But Ethereum is right there, right? I would say it's even beating them beating bitcoin sometimes on a popularity contest front right which is translates into a higher search in a recent time frame you know uh, for ethereum to be above the four thousand four hundred fifty dollars level at the current level and the next one's on bitcoin as four hours ago top of bloomberg intelligence says that ethereum futures etf more likely than spot bitcoin funds um, so it seems like with respect to the Ethereum future ETF, you know, despite, you know, not yet approved yet by the SEC, it seems like based on Bloomberg's in, uh, intelligence uh, and the article they say here specifically on Bitcoin is that um, this is something that's in work. Um, that is, I wouldn't be surprised if we actually get some formalization going forward, similar to like the Bitcoin ETF that we've seen about a couple weeks ago. So if that's the case, that's some anticipatory pressure that we should be anticipating. Um, and that should translate into more buying pressure uh, onto the market, specifically for Ethereum to incentivize the price to go up. And then the next one is on Crypto Whale. Um, on Bazinga, five hours ago, talk about a Crypto Whale just moved $235 million worth of Ethereum off Binance. Again, a big number, but nothing really you know depicting around is it an exchange or is it a transaction or is it some sort of um one-to-one -one wallet transfer that doesn't really have anything to do with the uh supply or the demand it's just what like it's still there in the market it's just that they shift from one wallet to another wallet right it's like you're buying a new wallet, you know, but you put like $250 million in your wallet, but you, instead of having like a, I don't know, a Prada wallet, you, you want to switch it to like a Louis Vuitton wallet. Is this still a wallet? It's the same wallet. Or you maybe get a Costco wallet. It's still the same thing, right? It's not like they've changed anything. So I'm not sure why um, these are even news, to be honest with you. But I guess it's a big amount. So I guess people are, it's a clickbait, if you may, right? The next one's on Bazinga seven hours ago. It's a lot of news today, huh? Why experts predicts five thousand dollars to Solana by twenty thirty? So this is like a technical analysis. They basically comparing a lot with Ethereum on the characteristics, the characteristics of how we're surging so far, and if that translates into a surge coming, um, and you basically embody that into the current dynamics for Solana. How will that be surging by the 2023, 2030 mark? Uh, interesting article, but it's ultimately still a speculation. Um, and I don't know if this is, you know, real substantive, but it does come from a panel of 50 experts um, on their collective wisdom or calculations, if you may. So that's pretty much it overall. So let's go dive into the technical front. So right now with the 4,475, down about 1.33% so far. And with respect to, I was just checking at the monitor, sorry. Um, with respect to the current level right now, we know that we are sustaining because Bitcoin sustaining. Uh, we are forming a, wor a curvature. And I, th I think as we, you see this line right here on the golden cross, as we cross that line downward, this will form a death cross. And as we form a death cross, which we have tried, you could see that specifically on the 27th 
of October, which is not technically not that long ago. If we cross that, we have a basically some room to fall back to the 4,300 as a first level because we have some consolidation. But ideally to the 4,150, if we break that, we're going to go down to 3,143. But because of the fact that we're the 63 out of 70, so technically we're still very overbought right now. So I think completely completing this oscillation downward to 3,850, to 3475 or ideally to even the 3150 would be logical and um will we see 2750 i think that will be very unlikely because of the frames of resistance that we have and knowing the fact that these levels are we still have some fall to go right so ideally coming down and dollar cost averaging you know if you have some risk tolerance 4150 is not a bad level 3850 i think that's very promising and very imminent um, and as the prices go down is actually good for us because uh, if you believe in this long term the risk is definitely increasing momentarily for us to incur logical risk to dollar cost average and then build that up from here right so bitcoin right now is uh, curving down we're still at the bearish momentum we are doing exactly what we're supposed to be doing basically trade on a sideways fashion for a long time deplete the rsi so the RSI naturally just depletes back to like the 54 level out of, we were at the 60 despite the same level that we were at before. Because we've been trading on a sideways fashion, you basically drag out the RSI to the point that it depletes. And as we continue to drag it out, we will hit to a point where we'll go down to ideally the, below 35. And we could technically still be in the same level, but below 35 if we keep dragging out, but it's just going to take time, right? And as we form there, we will, basically uh, incentivize the market to surge back again because it allows time for the monetary circulations to cool down and then recirculate back up to normal to allow for Bitcoin to surge all over again. This is also called a downward wedge if you if I translate that you know into more layman terms um, and downward wedge is always positive uh, based on the you know the technical setup and I think this could logically be it. Uh, if we're going to keep continuing trading on sideways fashion, leading more downwards, but still testing above the 60k. Dogecoin right now is just hovering and we're forming a death cross, so I think selling back down to the 23 to the 20 cents would be much more logical to dollar cost average at. Cardano right now is uh, is fusing together, and I think we are at the verge of surging up, uh, but we're waiting for the right catalyst right now with the 42 out of 70, so not the worst, but not the best. But I think ideally surging back up again uh, to retest to two dollars, and then ideally to the two ten would be logical. So Lana, right now we are surging, we surge up to test the all time high two fifty and selling back down, exactly what you're supposed to be. Um, I think right now at the sixty seven out of seventy, ideally selling back down, you know, and allow it to cool down because we've been running really hot, like very hot for a long time. I would say. How long has it been? Ever since like the late September and it's almost mid-November already. Um, obviously, still have like a week, but like you know what I mean. We've been dragging up really fast and also like there's a lot of um, cross-section that we attempted to try to cross down to but never got there because of well manipulations that the well curved down and also the 60, we are the 62 up 70, 67 up 70, so not the most ideal. Um, again, right, the 130, which is more logical as a cons consolidation level, 113. That's what I would ideally buy. XRP right now is uh, forming a curvature. I think the apex is already hit. You could not get to 130. So when you don't get to 130, you go down, go down to 120. You broke 120 with the 116. So you broke 116, you go into the 110, which is the next level, right? So. Ideally, dollar cost of the 110 to 101, if we break 110, will be the next logical level. And I think it makes sense because we're the 60 out of 70 right now. Polkadot right now, it's uh, at the curvature, um, 67 out of 70, curving down right now. So ideally, filling this gap as a first level, 62 out of uh, on the level to first dollar cost average at. But I think that you have better level to come down to, ideally coming back to the 30 to the $25 will be more respectful. And then the last two one Algorand is just hovering. I think we might see more sell off down to the one sixty to one fifty two. 
Shiba Inu is uh, doing some magical movement right now, uh, not the most ideal or favorable. Uh, the reason that we're reversing right now because that's like the first escalator before we have that mega escalation. You went from an escalator to an elevator basically, and that's the reason why you have some incurrence of surging pressure. Right now with the 60 out of 70, um, ideally waiting for it to leap up again. Uh, but is this long durated? I don't think so. I think we might get to again, right, the 72, 7246, and then sell back down from here. But ultimately, this is a lot of well manipulations and a lot of well activities that happening right now so ultimately we're in the business of risk mitigation i don't think the risk is in your favor at the moment to be chasing in because technically right now this is like a big gamble and i don't suggest doing so right now so let's take a look at the oh sorry this is my sister's channel so feel free to give her a shout out i'll link the link in the description below With respect to the price target let's just zoom in real quick um apologies for the background noise as well it's like someone's like blasting the tv next to me right now so these are risk management level for us to dollar cost average at right now um and these are the levels as we deplete back to below of our side of 35 and as we preliminary cross that golden cross right and that's the level i personally feel more comfortable buying or incurring risks right investing is ultimately about risk mitigation or risk management and i feel comfortable when the risk is more in our favor right so for this is helpful. Really appreciate you for your time. Uh, hope you guys have a great rest of the Friday and a good week weekend ahead. You'll probably see me again tomorrow. And stay tuned for to come up. Take care. Bye.